What is going on everybody? It's Stas here. Welcome back to another video. So in today's video, just like always, we're going to be doing an overall market update, looking at the S&P 500, the Dow Jones, and the NASDAQ. We're also going to be talking about what I ended up doing today on the 30th of May in 2019 in terms of my trades, as well as just taking a look at how the overall market did in terms of some other individual stocks, what other stocks am I personally watching, ETFs, we're going to be getting into that in today's video as well. But before we do get into all of these different topics, for all of you guys out there that enjoy the content, you find value in the content, feel free to go down below and hit that like button. It really supports me and supports the channel in general. And if you're new to the channel, I have two links down below in the description box, one of them being the Strive Smart Discord group and the other one being the Strive Smart Facebook group. Both of those are very val valuable communities that you should be a part of if you want to interact with our community in general. So without further ado, let's just hop right into it, guys. So the S&P 500 ended up closing up today $5.84, up 0.21% at the close. The Dow Jones Industrial Average up 43 points up 0.17% at the close. And the NASDAQ here is actually up right now 0.5%, up 38 points. And this is the future. It's about 50 minutes after hours at the time that I am recording this video. So if we look and see precisely where the NASDAQ did end up closing. It was about roughly where we are right now, so about a 0.5% day in the green for the NASDAQ. So overall today, guys, the markets were kind of choppy, to, be, to, to say the least, right? The markets were kind of choppy. We didn't have an insane red day. We didn't have an insane green day. It was kind of in the middle. We were just up and down, up and down, nothing too crazy, um, you know, in terms of the markets. It was just one of those kind of boring days. And let's just talk, you know, a bit deeper here on some technicals for the S&P. Then we'll get into the Dow and into the NASDAQ. So judging on this 184-hour chart, we've been talking about this over the past couple of videos, how the S&P 500 broke $2,800. This was a very critical level of support, a level that used to be a resistance back Back towards the end of February, obviously, we broke out of the resistance, making that level a new support, right? We ended up holding it in the middle, uh, I guess you could say more towards the beginning of May here at about 2805. We retested the level about a week ago on the 23rd of May, and then we finally retested the $2,800 level again about two days ago, and that is when we ended up breaking below it. So now we're simply trading between 2733 which is the next level of support for the S&P 500 and about $2,800. So we're in this 70 point zone and that's pretty much where we're trading right now. So I would look for if the S&P continues to sell off, I would look for it to potentially hold 2733. And if we break that level, let's not get too ahead of ourselves, but let's say we do break that level here in the next couple of weeks, maybe in the next month, two months, three months, however long it does take, you know, the next level that we may be heading to will be around 2683. And let me just uh, outline that really quickly for you all right now take a look at this 2690 ish i guess you can say 2690 not 2683 2690 was a support back in the beginning of february in 2019 so that's a level where i would look to see if the S&P does break 2730 for it to go to 2690. But again, let's not get too hard of ourselves because we've yet to break that first level of support. But looking at, you know, the 20 day chart here, we're still technically in a downtrend. I got a question in the group chat today in the discord the group chat. Stas, is the market still in a downtrend? Yes, the market is still in a downtrend, right? We're noticing on the 20 day, one hour chart here, we're noticing the SMAs, the green line you're seeing, the, the yellow line, the 50 SMA being the green, the 180 SMA being the yellow. These are both still acting as levels of resistance, right? We're noticing the bearish cross here of the 50 SMA crossing below the 180 SMA. We all know when that ends up happening, when we see that bearish cross, 
that can signify and really tell us while we're doing our technical analysis that there might be some more red to come. And pretty much ever since that's happened, there's been more red following that cross. And we're noticing how at this point in time, you know, we're still at that lower low point and we're still at that point in time where we're at the lower low in the downtrending pattern, right? We're not breaking out of the moving averages. We're simply just hovering here. And again, it wasn't a crazy trend trading day. It wasn't one of those days where we ran up 40 points, where we went down 40 points, which is why the technical breakdown is kind of the same as it was in yesterday's video, right? Not much has changed, but what I'm personally watching here is I'm waiting to see, you know, let's say we run tomorrow again. Let's say we have another green day tomorrow. Are we going to test that 50 SMA resistance? If we break that level, we may be running up to the 180 SMA resistance here. But if we notice some level of resistance, if we notice you know, the candlestick struggling to get out of this 50 SMA tomorrow and we slowly start to fall down, at that point, you know, the RSI might be at the overbought status. That could be a point in time where we may continue this sell-off. And if we look on the five-day, five-minute, we actually saw a brief moment today, uh, actually for the, most of the entire day, honestly, where the 180 SMA here was acting as a resistance, which in my eyes also signified the continuation of this downtrend. Notice how on the five-day, five-minute, the 180 SMA and the 50 SMA, both of these levels have been acting as resistances. And today we popped up got rejected, popped up, lower high, got rejected again. And we kind of downtrended, although we um, popped up, uh, you know, the gap up here, we pretty much did downtrend for the entire day. If it wasn't for this gap up, let's say we opened up, you know, the same spot where we closed yesterday and we did this pattern, guys, the same pattern we did today, but let's say shift it down a bit. If we didn't have that gap up, we probably would have closed somewhere down here and the pattern would still be in a downtrend pattern. So all in all, guys, the S&P, yes, it is still in a downtrend. The downtrend continues here for the 500 largest publicly traded U.S. companies that we follow. So again, guys, I'm personally still viewing this as, and, and the market in general, as some more selling, more selling to come. I'm not... Um, you know, thinking to myself that we're going to reverse here to the upside until we get a break in those technicals, those resistance levels that we talked about a couple of minutes ago. So going over here to the Dow Jones Industrial Average, we talked about yesterday how we're trading between $25,000, that level of support, and around $25,500, putting us in this 500-point window. And oh my God, it is thundering so bad outside. I'm in New Jersey right now. For those of you guys that don't know and we've been having tornado warnings and you probably can't hear that uh, through the speakers here or through the uh, the microphone but it is absolutely looking like it's going to pour out there but anyway the Dow Jones is simply just holding the support um, that we held yesterday and the technicals haven't really changed much right when you have days like this in the markets where you know it's a 0.1% day in the green or a 0.1% day in the red. That doesn't really change the technicals too much from the day-to-day -day activities, right? Which is why I don't want to spend a crazy amount of time on this technical breakdown because I kind of broke it down already in this morning's video, if you guys watched that one. And in yesterday's video, um, of course, the market update yesterday, I broke it down as well. But for those of you new viewers out there, you may be watching me for the first time, I'm still going to be breaking it down for you in today's video. So we talked about, again, we're in that 500-point range from 25000 to 25000 $500. And just like the S&P 500, the downtrend is still intact. The bearish cross is there. Moving averages are acting as resistance levels. And today was merely a kind of a consolidation day. Again, we closed the big green, but it wasn't really a crazy day in the green. So if we do end up running up tomorrow for the Dow Jones, let's say we have another green day, I would be waiting to see 
if we get rejected by this 50 SMA. And honestly, I would love to enter into one of these market ETFs that go up when the markets sell off at these particular zones, um, you know, at these particular levels. Let's say if the market pops up, we start to see some resistance there. That can offer a ton of margin on some of these market ETFs that we trade, I talk about, and uh, and I trade and talk about on these, on this channel, right? So if we pop up, you know, watch for that 50 SMA as a resistance level, guys, because noticing over the past couple of weeks, it's been a strong level of resistance, excuse me. And if we're going to the five day, five minute here, we're noticing how the 180 SMA, just like the S&P 500, has been acting as a resistance, right? The bottom or the, 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 the top off here, lower low, lower low, or actually I should say lower high here. Two rejections under the 180 SMA, and we're seeing a potential breakout on the moving averages. And actually, one thing I should mention here, guys, if we do end up gapping up tomorrow, let's say the futures are green and we start to break out of this 180 SMA resistance, you know, this could lead us to break out and on the longer term charts on the 20 day one hour, this may be what we need to see on the smaller term charts for us to reach the 50 SMA resistance on the 20 day one hour chart. And this is really a prime example of why it's super important to analyze a bunch of different time frames. Because if you're just looking at this 20 day one hour chart, you may say, okay, we could potentially gap up here, but then you're looking at the five day, five minute, and you're noticing the resistance. So first we need to break out of this resistance, which again, we're slowly doing here after, um, you know, towards the close of the market. And if we see that break here on the five day, five minute, then we can go to the 20 day, one hour, and we'll slowly see the gap filling up to the 50 SMA right there. And that's a bunch, uh, that's really the same as the uh, S&P in terms of the technical analysis on the five day, five minute. We're seeing a slow breakout. Let's say we break out to the upside like this tomorrow, that will be getting us closer to that 50 SMA here on the 20 day, one hour chart. So let's talk about the NQ very quickly again this is this is the best performing one in terms of today's market but judging on the 20 day one hour a lot of the same guys a lot of the same as the dow and the s&p and what i talked about in in the in the video this morning and in the video yesterday right there's no need for me to you know repeat this a hundred times but again we get new viewers on the channel every single day and we're noticing the downtrend is still intact, right? We're noticing moving averages, the SMAs, they're acting as resistance levels, bearish cross, lower lows in the candlesticks, lower highs. Everything that I'm seeing is pointing to more selling. And we're seeing how now we're seeing... You know, the NASDAQ is breaking this 50 SMA a bit. So I'd wait and see tomorrow if we fully, you know, break out of that 50 SMA and we start to test this level of uh, resistance that we're approaching right now, which is at about 7270. And why is this a level of, re of resistance, guys? Well, it was an old support back in, actually, this was about a week ago, 23rd of May. We bottomed off at this level. We popped up and obviously we broke that level of of support making it a resistance so pretty much right now the candlesticks on the nasdaq are trading between 7220 and about 7270 if we break out of 7270 the next spot we could be going to might be 7300 flat which again is a resistance that we're seeing here and if we break that level on the upside we may be going to the 180 sma but let's not get too ahead of ourselves we need to see first the break above 7270, then the break above 7300 before we can test that 180 simple moving average here. So 184 hour chart very quickly on the NASDAQ is trading above the 7200 level of support, which I talked about yesterday and, 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 and in this morning's video. Oh my God, I cannot get my words together today, guys. I apologize about that. But this level is a very critical level of support, right? If we start to get into the low 7,000s, even in the 6,900 level for the NASDAQ, we're going to be in levels that we really haven't fallen down to since this big sell-off that we saw a couple of months ago and during this climb that we were seeing in the beginning of 2019. So I would think, in my opinion, you know, if we do 
uh, you know, pop up, get rejected by the 50 SMA and sell down into the 7,000s, low 7,000s, you know, high 6,000s, right, 68, 6,900, you know, that could lead to more selling here on a technical basis for the NASDAQ. So that's pretty much it. You know, for today's market update video uh, or market update portion of the video, you know, nothing crazy, guys, nothing crazy. The markets, the technicals, they're really the same as they were in the beginning of the day and in yesterday's video. But again, it's super important for me to talk about this stuff, break it down because we are growing as a community. The channel is growing every single day. New people, new eyes on the videos. And I want to get the knowledge. I want to get the value out to you guys, the new people out there. So you can understand what I'm seeing, how I'm viewing things, and it can maybe better your trading. That's the whole idea here, right? So let's talk about what I ended up doing today in terms of my trading. It was a pretty quick trading day today for me, guys. If you watched my morning video, you saw that I was talking about um, gold. I was talking about McDonald's. We saw the big dump on crude oil, and I actually ended up taking a trade in McDonald's, and McDonald's ended up playing out so beautifully, so perfect to my plan. I made a video yesterday actually talking about McDonald's stock. If you guys watch that video, it's called Two Value Stocks That I'm Looking to Swing Trade Right now. McDonald's was one of them alongside of Coca-Cola, and McDonald's ended up playing out so perfectly, guys. And if you guys watched the video yesterday and I talked about it this morning, I called it out in this morning's video. I know a bunch of you guys actually did end up playing McDonald's. I got some messages on Instagram. People were saying, nice call out, Stas. Thanks for calling out McDonald's. And just to prep it, uh, put this out there, guys, don't just trade stuff simply because I'm calling it out. It's different if I'm calling it out and you're doing your due diligence and your understanding and then you go trade it. That's all cool, right? That's that's great. But if I'm just calling these out and you're blindly going in and trading them, that is a problem. You have to understand the technicals. You have to understand everything for yourself before hopping into any specific trade. But the gist of it here, guys, was we got the pullback on McDonald's. <coughs> Excuse me. We got the pullback on McDonald's yesterday over the past couple of days down to that 195 level of support. And that 195 level of support put us roughly at a level that we were holding above in the beginning of May and on top of the 180 SMA. We got the sell off. We were seeing some consolidation here on the 180 SMA level of support, which was initially opening my eyes to McDonald's. And then what do you see today, guys? The bounce was absolutely unbelievable, right? We we literally launched right off of that 195 level of support. And let me show you guys a bit closer here on the five day, five minute. How crazy this bull run was today, guys. Oh my goodness, right? Take a look at the five day, five minute here. We topped that 200. We were selling off, selling off, got to 194. And then once we started to break that moving average this morning, and honestly, I saw the gap up this morning in McDonald's, which was opening my eyes uh, to a potential trade. And then once we started to see it popping up aggressively, especially into the 197 level, which I was saying, that's the level I want to see it get into before trading it. You know, that's what led me to take my position, right? And on the 184 hour chart, let's talk about that 197 level very quickly. And let me explain to you guys why I wanted to see a break into that level before for um, taking a position, right? So we got the bounce on the 180 SMA. That was a confirming point right there. That was the first confirming point. The second confirming point was we were gapping up pre-market hours, right? The markets were looking green. That was the second confirming point. The third one was we were... Um, kind of, actually, I got in before we uh, tested the resistance at about 197.75. We can see that level right here, but I actually traded it through the resistance. And once we broke that resistance, that gave me confidence to continue to hold it. But I wanted to see a break into the 197 level before taking a position and then a break out of the 197 level when to take my profits, right? That was kind of the goal on this trade. And we saw 
Again, we broke out of the 197 level and we actually ended up closing to at 199.24 and we're actually at 199.5 here after market hours. So that's pretty good in terms of, uh, you know, technicals here. Everything was pointing in the green for me uh, to take this trade and that's exactly what I ended up doing, guys. So on the one day, one minute, um, you can see again, we gapped up, we popped up aggressively. I ended up getting in at about 197. Again, a bit premature to that break of the resistance, but the whole idea here, guys, was, you know, I was seeing the aggressive push. I was seeing the uptrend really just keeping itself and keeping intact. And I just took a position on one of these dips, right? I believe it was it was this dip right here. We pull back a little bit. We consolidated at about 197.05, 197.08. That's when I took my position. And then once we launched out of 197, we pulled back and we held it as a support and we continued to rise up. That gave me even further confirmation that we're breaking out of the resistance and we want to go back into the 200 level for McDonald's, right? So I got in again at about 197.07, 197. <clears throat> oh, 08. Then I ended up selling off as we started to truck up into the 198.50 level, 198, you know, 975, you know, closer to that 199 level. That's when I ended up taking my profits. It ended up being not crazy of not too crazy of a profit, right? We can see McDonald's closed up 1.64%. So it wasn't a crazy day, but I took about a 0.9% profit, guys. And for me, you know, that is really, really good. Think about it. If you're trading with ten thousand dollars that's a hundred dollar profit right there in about an hour let's say you're trading with 20 grand let's say you put in twenty thousand dollars one percent is two hundred dollars profit and so on and so forth if you're trading with thirty thousand you take a thirty thousand position here you're managing your risk you're watching it you know you're keeping an eye on the trend you can make three hundred dollars in the matter of about an hour, two hours, just trading um, McDonald's stock. So that's all I ended up doing today, guys. I'm not going to lie to you all. I was tempted. I was really tempted today to take a, a little trade in SQQQ. We can see here on the one day, one minute, I was actually going to get in right here, but I did not want to get greedy. I would have made money there. I would have made money, but we can see it crashed sh shortly after. So I made a decent decision by not getting in. You know, if I wasn't able to take the profits, I would have lost everything. Not everything, but I would have lost my gain there. And there are times, guys, where I, um, you know, again, like I talked about in yesterday's video, I'm typically taking my profits and then stopping for the day. But there are days where I take my profits then, and then I'm like, okay, maybe I could trade this and make some more money, right? I'm a human too. I'm trying to get my emotions under control a lot like you guys are. It's just a part of the game. And I didn't take the position, and I'm glad I didn't take the position. But I figured I'd mention it. I almost did take a position in SQQQ today because I was noticing the markets, um, you know, selling off more towards the middle of the day here before we did get that little push towards the end of the day. If we're just looking at the S&P very quickly, um, before we talk about very quickly some other stocks that I'm watching, you know, we did notice the big sell-off before we ended up popping back up. So that's pretty much it, guys, for today's market update uh, video. Excuse me. Um, tomorrow, what I'm going to be watching is, uh, you know, mostly these, again, these market ETFs, right? These the SQQQ, the TQQQ, those two leveraged inverse ETFs, I'm watching those very closely, right? SQQQ is going up when the NASDAQ is selling off at a 3x rate. Let's say the markets go up tomorrow. Let's say the NASDAQ does well tomorrow. TQQQ is going to be going up along with that, which is a bull ETF that follows the NASDAQ. It goes up at a 3x rate when the NASDAQ's going up, right? So 1% green for TQQQ, that will mean, or uh, for the NASDAQ rather, that will mean a 3% day for TQQQ, right? This is the TQQ ETF. You guys can see it's up about 1.19%. NASDAQ ended up closing at about 0.4%. And you guys can see 0.4 times 3, what is that? That's 1.2, right? That's how it uh, ends up being calculated here. So in terms of stocks, there actually is an interesting one that I 
um, am watching right now, and that is JNJ. They actually had some, I forget exactly what happened. I didn't look too deep into it, but there was some news. And if you guys remember what ended up happening, it was yesterday or the day before that caused the stock to tank. Drop a comment and let me know because I'm forgetting off the top of my head right now. But there was some bad news about JNJ. Dropped the stock from 140 down to about 128. So this is one that I'm watching for a potential rebound play here. We're, we're noticing how, you know, it's re been rebounding, honestly, since it did drop yesterday. We hit 128. We had a pretty flat day today. So let's see if we're going to rebound back up into the mid-130s tomorrow. That's something that I'm potentially watching on, um, you know, JNJ here. Another one that I'm watching in terms of ETFs, guys, is Drip. Drip has been going crazy over these past couple of weeks. We saw crude oil fell I think it was an inventory problem. You know, oil fell. Crude oil got absolutely smashed today, guys. 4.08% in the red. So if this downtrend issue or this downtrend pattern continues, I'd be watching, um, you know, DWT, which is an ETF that goes up whenever crude oil is selling off. Hence why it was up 12% today. It's a 3X ETF, right? 12%. If you guys saw, um, crude oil was down 4%, so it was up three times what crude oil was down. This is one that I'm definitely watching. So let's say crude oil bounces up tomorrow. Let's say we see a bit of a rebound and a retest at that 50 SMA, which I'm not too sure it's going to happen. Well, we could trade UWT in that case, right? UWT is going up whenever crude oil is going up. This could be a pretty good bounce back play. And drip, and uh, Drip and Gush, they don't necessarily trade exactly on crude oil. They trade on XOP, which is an oil and gas-based ETF. This one got hit 3% nearly today, which is what caused Drip to do very well. So I'll, I'll keep an eye, and what I am honestly doing is just keeping an eye on these oil ETFs. I see a lot of potential in them. I see a lot of margin of profits in them, as long as XOP and crude oil are volatile. I, I honestly think these are going to be plays for these next couple of days. So KO is another one. Um, this one spiked up again, or it actually spiked up today. And this is actually another one of those value stocks that I was talking about in yesterday's video. The, literally the video called Two Value Stocks. I'm looking to swing trade. Go check that video out yesterday. I literally talked about McDonald's and KO. And literally both of them bounced today. And this is one that I'm looking for. A potential trade up to $50 per share, right? We're, we're now, we broke the 49 level of resistance, which was I was, which is what I was waiting for. And now maybe a gap fill up to 50 will be a good move for tomorrow. So those are just a couple that I'm personally watching, guys. Let me know down below in the comment section what you guys are doing. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to hit that like button. Again, it really supports me, and I appreciate every single one of you guys out there hitting that like button, subscribing to the channel, hitting the notification bell. It really does mean a lot to me. And if you guys want to be further connected with me, our community, all the links are down below. The Strive Smart Discord, Strive Smart Facebook, Strive Smart Instagram, my personal Instagram on Twitter, everything is linked down below so you guys can be further connected so i'll catch you all in the next video again i appreciate all of you watching it means a lot to me good luck peace out i'll see you all tomorrow